Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, last time, or in the, I guess it would really be two lectures ago, when we first started talking about matrix transformations and linear transformations, what we did is we established a very strong connection between matrix transformations and linear transformations. What we showed is that they're the same, right? A matrix transformation is a linear transformation, and vice versa, a linear transformation is a matrix transformation. Anytime if you have a linear transformation, you can find the standard matrix for that transformation. So they are one and the same. That's what our theorem told us. Now that we have established this connection, I, I want to ask and, and answer the following question. If you think back to how we defined matrix multiplication, it's a bizarre definition, right? Who would have ever come up with, why would you come up with such a weird way to multiply matrices? There's much easier formulas that, that, that would make sense, um, perhaps, for, for, for multiplying matrices. So let me write this down. So, oh, whoops, and I didn't even erase my old stuff here. So here's the question. Um, why is matrix multiplication defined as it is? Who cooked up this bizarre way to multiply matrices and why? Um, well, you can see I didn't erase my material from my last lecture, so let me get that out of the way. All right, so we're going to answer this question. Um, now, to do so, we need to talk and sort of back up a little bit and talk about composition. Well, composition of functions really at, the, at its heart, but we're going to talk about composition of transformations. So to talk about comp composition of transformations, let me just remind you what it means to do composition of two functions. So um, I'll just say recall, if, um, if we have a couple of functions, so let's say if uh, f is a function from a to b and g is a function from b to c, then we can do composition. Um, the composition I know that's terrible handwriting comp -o -z -sh of f with g is the function and we write this g circle f you read this g of f and it's a function from A to C, defined by G of F. So the name of the function is G of F. It's being applied to the point X. G of F of X is equal to G of F of X. You've been doing function composition for a long time, all right, especially in calculus. Where does this show up? Well, you use the chain rule every time when you want to take the derivative of a composition of functions. All right, so you've seen composition of functions. There's nothing new here. Um, but it's nice to see a picture. You Perhaps when you learn composition, you probably didn't have this function notation here. So the picture of composition goes like this. Let's imagine we've got our three sets, A, B, and C. F is a function from A to B. G is a function from B to C, and then the composition, G of F, is a function from A to C. How does it work? Well, it takes the point X, you first apply F to it, and then you apply G to the result, so you get G of F of X. All right, so that's how it works. You've seen this before. Um, the one thing to, to be aware of, <clears throat> Almost everything we do in math, we read left to right, but function composition is read right to left, right? So this is the inside function. The one on the right is the one that you perform first, then you do the outside function. Okay, now what we want to do is talk about composition of functions in the transformation setting. Remember, every transformation, every linear transformation, is a function. So suppose... That we have 
the matrix transformation T sub A, that's going to go from Rn to Rm. And we also are going to have T sub B, that will be a transformation from Rm to, let's say, R sub K. All right, so we've got a couple of transformations. And let's draw the picture here. So, so we've got an R uh, N, we've got an R M, we've got an R K. We know that T sub A goes like that. We know that T sub B goes like that, which means that we can do composition T sub B of T sub A. So we have T sub B of T, oops, T sub A is a function from Rn to R sub K. And notice I said function here. I didn't say linear transformation. We know that T sub A and T sub B are matrix transformations. One question you might ask, if you do composition of matrix transformations, do you get a matrix transformation? Now, how is this defined? So um, it's defined by T sub B of T sub A applied to, I'll write this as a vector X, so now X is an element, it's, it's a vector in R sub N. And how does this work? Well, this is T sub B of T sub A of X. Now, how do we compute T sub A of X? Well, that's matrix multiplication, right? This is T sub B of A times X. Right? To, to, to compute right, the output T sub A applied to X, you do matrix multiplication A times X. Now, this is a vector, right? This vector lives in R sub M. A of X lives in R sub M. And when we apply B to it, T sub B, what do we do? We do matrix multiplication. So this is B times AX. And remember, we have the associativity property working for us. For us. So this is B A times the vector X. So what does that tell us? Well, this right here is exactly what you would do if you were doing the matrix transformation T sub B A. So what we just showed, so uh, T sub B of T sub A is equal to T sub B A. And I'll put some, some exclamation points right there. What did we just show? We showed that the composition actually is a matrix transformation and it told us exactly who it is. It is T sub B A. Let's, let's write this down as a theorem. All right, so collect all the computation that we just did. So if, um, T sub A is a matrix transformation from Rn to Rm, and uh, T sub B is a matrix transformation, so this will be R, um, uh, M to Rk. Um, so if these are matrix transformations, uh, then T sub B of T sub A is a matrix transformation, and T 
sub b of t sub a equals t sub b a. So the standard matrix for the composition is the matrix b sub a. Now, at the beginning, what I said is we would like to, well, I posed this question. Why did we define matrix multiplication in such a bizarre way? And now we've got the answer. Matrix multiplication is defined to be compatible with function or matrix transformation composition. That is why. So that when we do composition of two functions, we can find the matrix corresponding to this composition right here, this linear transformation, by doing matrix multiplication. That is where it comes from. So, in fact, let's say that, so I'm going to put this between stars, uh, matrix multiplication is defined so as to be compatible with uh, composition of linear transformations. I want to do an example of this principle now. So let's get a couple of, um, of transformations here. So um, I'm going to do T1. That's going to be a transformation from R3 to R2. And it's defined by T sub 1 of um, XYZ. equals, uh, let's see, top entry will be x plus y, and the bottom entry is x minus z. Okay, so there's linear transformation number one, and number two, which we'll call t sub two, that's going to be a transformation from r2 to r, uh, where'd it go, r2 to r4, and this, so this one's defined by of uh, x comma y or x over y is now this is going to be a vector with four entries um, 2x x plus y uh, 3x minus y and then y so here's our transformations if we do composition, so composition will go like this. Um, so T2 of T1 will be a transformation from R3 to R4. And I'd like to find the standard matrix for, for this transformation. So first, let's just look at how, if we actually did the composition, let's see what the formula would look like. So um, how would this go? Um, so T2 of T1 of a, a vector x, y, z, that would be equal to, <clears throat> um, so let's see, it's going to be T2 of the vector um, x plus y, x minus z. Okay, so now we need to apply T2 to this, and so this is going to be, um, so let's see, first we do 2 times x plus y, right, because T2 tells us, um, uh, T2 tells us to do what? To double the top entry. Then the second part tells us to add the top and the bottom, so that would be an x plus y plus x minus z. Then we take the top entry and multiply by 3 and subtract away the bottom entry. 
And then the last one tells us to just write down the bottom entry, so that's x minus z. <clears throat> and let me clean this up a little bit. So this would be 2x plus 2y, 2x plus y minus z, uh, 3x minus x, so 2x plus 3y plus z, and then um, x minus z. So here's our formula for t2 of t1 of x, y, z. Now, <clears throat> with this formula in hand, we can write down the, the standard matrix for T2 of T1. Okay, so um, standard matrix. Oops. Of T2 of T1. Um, okay, so what do I do to find that? I plug in the standard basis vectors for R3. So I'm going to plug E1, E2, E3 in. Whatever I get out, those will be the columns of my matrix. So first I'm going to plug in E sub 1. So that means plug in 1, 0, 0. And when I do, I'm going to get, um, so I'm plugging 1, 0, 0 in, so I'm going to get 2, 2, 2, 1. 2, 2, 2, 1. Then we've got T2 of, oop, oop, that should say 1. T2 of T1 of, now I'm going to plug in E2, so that'll be a 0, 1, 0. So everywhere I see a Y, I put a 1. Everywhere else, I put zeros. So that's going to be a 2, 1, three, zero. And so T2 of T1 of, oops, shoot. All right, I, I wrote that a little weird. That I should be plugging in zero, one, zero. And what I got was, I'm gonna do it again now, uh, two, one, three, zero. All right, now for the last column of our matrix, I'm gonna plug in zero, zero, one. And so, um, so what, I'm going to get 0, minus 1, <clears throat> 1, minus 1. So the standard matrix of T2 of T1 will be with columns T2, 2, 1, 2, 1, 3, 0, 0, minus 1, 1, minus 1. Okay, so now let's write down the matrix corresponding to T um, to T two. So uh, matrix of T two. I want to put here, and I want to put the matrix of T one right here. So okay, we need to remember the formula T two of X Y is going to be. Um, let it go here, so it's going to be 2x, then we get um, x plus y, and then 3x minus y, and then we have uh, y. So the matrix of T2, what do I do? I plug in the standard basis vectors, and so we're going to get... Um, uh, uh, okay, so when I plug in 1, 0, I'm going to get 2, 1, 3, 0. And then when I plug in um, 0, 1, that will give me a 0, 1, minus 1, 1. Okay, so now the matrix of T1, I need to write down the formula T1 of x, y, z equals, uh, is it x plus y x plus y over, over x minus z. Okay, and so what do we get for a matrix? We get, um, okay, so I'm going to plug in E1. That's going to be 1, 0, 0. That will give me a 1, 1. Then I plug in, um, who's my next guy? Uh, one, uh, 0, 1, 0. That's a 1, 0. Then I plug in 0, 0, 1. 
that will give me 0 minus 1. Okay, and now we need to multiply these, or I'm going to multiply these now. And what do we get? Um, we get 2, 2, 0. That was taking the, the top row and dotting it with each of those columns. Now I'm going to do a 1, 1 dotted with each of those, so that will be a um, 2, 1, and uh, minus 1. I'm just doing matrix multiplication here. Um, this is going to be 3 minus 1, so that's a 2, 3, positive 1, and then we'll get 1, 0, minus 1. <clears throat> and now we're supposed to compare. Look at this matrix, look at this matrix, we got exactly the same thing as the theorem told us, right? The matrix corresponding to the composition can be obtained by doing matrix multiplication. Okay, we need a definition now. Um, and so it goes like this. A matrix operator, T sub A. Remember, operator just means that we're dealing with a square matrix, which means that the corresponding transformation will go from Rn to Rn. The superscripts will match on the Rs. So matrix operator T sub A is invertible. If the corresponding matrix capital A is invertible. And then that allows us to define, so, so then we can define the inverse of T sub A to be equal to the obvious thing. So this is going to be T sub A inverse, right? So when a, uh, uh, when capital A is invertible, this line right here makes sense. Okay? Now, <clears throat> one thing to notice, so we'll say note, uh, note that um, if we do T sub A composed with T sub A raised to the minus 1. Uh, so that's going to be T sub A of T sub A inverse. And remember now, how does this work? This composition can be obtained by doing matrix multiplication. So we get the matrix operator T sub A times A inverse. Well, that is T sub I. Now, what would happen if you multiply by the identity matrix? Nothing happens to any vector. And this is exactly what you expect. When you compose a function, in this case a linear or a matrix transformation, with its inverse, right, they cancel each other out. The effects are, 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 are canceled out. Right, so this would make sense. And you can check. So check that if you do it in the opposite order, so t sub a raised to the minus 1 of t sub a, that's also t sub i. So, so this inverse that we've defined right here behaves exactly as a function inverse would be expected to behave. Um, so now let's try an example. Uh, let's let um, t from r3 to r3 be given by uh, t of x, y, z equals, um, so the formula will look like this, y x plus uh, 3y and z minus x. Uh, one thing to notice, I know officially I'm supposed to go like this, t of a vector. It just makes too many parentheses. So when I write it like this, I'm just kind of trying to, to simplify the, the notation, right? But it really means t of the vector inside. <clears throat> Okay, so here's our, our, 
our linear transformation. You can check this really as a linear transformation. What I want to do, our, our, our instructions here are to find t inverse of x, y, z. So it turns out that we have a function right here whose inverse exists, and I'd like to find the inverse. All right, and the process will be like this. Um, so first thing I would like to do is write down the matrix corresponding to this transformation. This is a linear transformation, so it's a matrix transformation. So the matrix of T is going to be, well, let's see. So let's see if we can just write down who these columns are. First, I plug in 1, 0, 0 and I will get 0, 1, minus 1. Now I plug in 0, 1, 0, and I will get 1, 3, 0. Uh, then I'm going to plug in 0, 0, 1, and I will get 0, 0, 1. Okay, so here's the matrix of T. We would like to then find a formula for the inverse. How do I do that? Well, <clears throat> if I call this matrix A right here, then T is T sub A, which means that T inverse is going to be the inverse of T sub A. And as we just defined, that is the matrix transformation corresponding to the matrix A inverse. So what do I need to do? I need to find A inverse. That will allow us to figure out the formula. Okay, so remember how to find the inverse. I'm going to write down my matrix A here, 0, 1, 0, 1, 3, 0, minus 1, 0, 1. And then on the other side, I put the identity matrix, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And then you do row operations. And I'm not going to make you go through all these row operations. I'm just going to write down the answer. But if you did row operations, eventually you'll get the identity on the left-hand side, and you'll be looking at the inverse on the right-hand side. And so if you go through the process, what you'll end up with is the identity matrix here. And then... Uh, let's see, it's going to go in, in rows, it'll be minus 3, 1, 0, uh, 1, 0, 0, and um, uh, minus 3, 1, 1, minus 3, 1, 1. Okay, so here, this matrix right here is A inverse. So, if we want a formula, T inverse of x, y, z, that is going to be a inverse times x, y, z, like that, it's accomplished by matrix multiplication, and then if we write that out, it's going to be uh, minus 3, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, minus 3, 1, 1, times the column x, y, z, and so what do we get? We get uh, minus 3x plus y. Then we get x. Then we get minus 3x plus y plus z. Let's check and make sure I did everything right. Minus 3x plus y, x minus 3x plus y plus z. Yeah, that's it. Okay, that's enough for today. Um, We'll see you next time. All right, bye.